In cosmology, recombination refers to the epoch at which charged electrons and protons first became bound to form electrically neutral hydrogen atoms. Recombination occurred about 378,000 years after the Big Bang. Immediately after the Big Bang, the universe was a hot, dense plasma of photons, electrons, and protons. This plasma was effectively opaque to electromagnetic radiation due to Thomson scattering by free electrons. As the mean free path each photon could travel before encountering an electron was very short. As the universe expanded, it also cooled. Eventually, the universe cooled to the point that the formation of neutral hydrogen was energetically favored, and the fraction of free electrons and protons as compared to neutral hydrogen decreased to a few parts in 10,000. Shortly after, photons decoupled from matter in the universe, which leads to recombination, sometimes being called photon decoupling. Although recombination and photon decoupling are distinct events, once photons decoupled from matter, they travel freely through the universe without interacting with matter, and constitute what we observe today as cosmic microwave background radiation. The recombination history of hydrogen. The cosmic ionization history is generally described in terms of the free electron fraction xc as a function of redshift. It is the ratio of the abundance of free electrons to the total abundance of hydrogen, denoting by Ni the number density of free electrons, NH that of atomic hydrogen and NP that of ionized hydrogen. Xc is defined as since hydrogen only recombines once helium is fully neutral, charge neutrality implies Ni equals NP, i.e. Xc is also the fraction of ionized hydrogen. Rough estimate from equilibrium theory It is possible to find a rough estimate of the redshift of the recombination epoch assuming the recombination reaction is fast enough that it proceeds near thermal equilibrium. The relative abundance of free electrons, protons and neutral hydrogen is then given by the Sahar equation, where Mi is the mass of the electron, Kb is Boltzmann's constant, T is the temperature, H is the reduced Planck's constant, and Ei equals 13.6 electron volts is the ionization energy of hydrogen. Charge neutrality requires Ni equals NP, and the Sahar equation can be rewritten in terms of the free electron fraction xe. All quantities in the right-hand side are known functions of redshift. The temperature is given by T equals 2.728 K, and the total density of hydrogen is given by NP plus NH equals 1.63 meters minus 3. Solving this equation for a 50% ionization fraction yields a recombination temperature of roughly 7003400000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
decay from the 2s state by emitting two photons. This two-photon decay process is very slow, with a rate of 8.22 s-1. It is however competitive with the slow rate of Lyman-alpha escape in producing ground-state hydrogen. Atoms in the first excited state may also be reionized by the ambient CMB photons before they reach the ground state. When this is the case, it is as if the recombination to the excited state did not happen in the first place. To account for this possibility, Peebles defines the factor C as the probability that an atom in the first excited state reaches the ground state through either of the two pathways, described above before being photonized. This model is usually described as an effective three-level atom, as it requires keeping track of hydrogen under three forms, in its ground state, in its first excited state, and ionized. Accounting for these processes, the recombination history is then described by the differential equation where alpha b is the case b recombination coefficient to the excited states of hydrogen, beta b is the corresponding photoionization rate and E21 equals 10.2 electron volts is the energy of the first excited state. Note that the second term in the right-hand side of the above equation can be obtained by a detailed balance argument. The equilibrium result given in the previous section would be recovered by setting the left-hand side to zero, i.e., assuming that the net rates of recombination and photoionization are large in comparison to the Hubble expansion rate which sets the overall evolution time scale for the temperature and density. However, C alpha BNP is comparable to the Hubble expansion rate, and even gets significantly lower at low redshifts, leading to an evolution of the free electron fraction much slower than what one would obtain from the Sahari equilibrium calculation. With modern values of cosmological parameters, one finds that the universe is 90% neutral at Z1070. Modern developments The simple effective three-level atom model described above accounts for the most important physical processes. However, it does rely on approximations which lead to errors on the predicted recombination history at the level of 10% or so, due to the importance of recombination for the precise prediction of cosmic microwave background anisotropies. Several research groups have revisited the details of this picture over the last two decades. The refinements to the theory can be divided into two categories accounting for the non-equilibrium populations of the highly excited states of hydrogen. This effectively amounts to modifying the recombination coefficient alpha b, accurately computing the rate of Lyman-alpha escape and the effect of these photons on the 2s1s transition. This requires solving a time-dependent radiative transfer equation. In addition, one needs to account for higher-order Lyman transitions. These refinements effectively amount to a modification of Peebler C factor. Modern recombination theory is believed to be accurate at the level of 0.1% and is implemented in publicly available fast recombination codes. Primordial helium recombination Helium nuclei are produced during Big Bang nucleosynthesis and make up about 24% of the total mass of baryonic matter. The ionization energy of helium is larger than that of hydrogen and it therefore recombines earlier. Because neutral helium carries two electrons, its recombination proceeds in two steps. The first recombination proceeds near Sahari equilibrium and takes place around redshift Z6000. The second recombination is slower than what would be predicted from Sahari equilibrium and takes place around redshift Z2000. The details of helium recombination are less critical than those of hydrogen recombination for the prediction of cosmic microwave background and isotropies. Since the universe is still very optically thick after helium has recombined and before hydrogen has started its recombination, primordial light barrier, this scattering causes a loss of information. 
and there is therefore a photon barrier at a redshift near that of recombination that prevents us from using photons directly to learn about the universe at larger redshifts. Once recombination had occurred, however, the mean free path of photons greatly increased due to the lower number of free electrons. Shortly after recombination, the photon mean free path became larger than the Hubble length, and photons traveled freely without interacting with matter. For this reason, recombination is closely associated with the last scattering surface which is the name for the last time at which the photons in the cosmic microwave background interacted with matter. However, these two events are distinct, and in a universe with different values for the baryon to photon ratio and matter density, recombination and photon decoupling need not have occurred at the same epoch. Bibliography Peebles J.E. Recombination of the Primeval Plasma, Astrophysical Journal 153, 1, Bibcode 1968 APJ, 153, 1P, DOI, 10.1086, 149,628, Zeldovich, B. Kurt, G. Sionyev, A. Recombination of Hydrogen in the Hot Model of the Universe. Journal Experimental Neue Theoretischeskoi Physiki 55, 278, Bibcode 1968ZHETF 55, 278Z, Longer, Malcolm, Galaxy Formation, Springer, ISBN 9783-540-734772, Padmanabhan, Tanu. Structural Formation in the Universe, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0-521-42486-0, Ryden, Barbara, Introduction to Cosmology, Addison Wesley, ISBN 0-8053-8912-1.